Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV, episode 51. So today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make these fun, adjustable bangle bracelets. These are great if you have a kind of weird wrist size, so maybe you have a larger wrist than average or a smaller wrist than average um, because you can customize them to your right size and they're adjustable so you can easily pull them on and off and it's not like they're way too big on your wrist when you're wearing them or too tight or anything like that. You make them exactly the size you want. So let's get started. So these are the materials and tools you'll need for this tutorial. First of all, you will need 14 gauge wire. I'm using 14 gauge dead soft wire, so it's really easy to use. But on the other hand, it's also really easy to bend and kind of get out of shape um, as you use it. So you might want to look for half hard wire. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to use, especially when you're using the 14 gauge. But it will hold its shape better. But I have a solution for that anyway, so um, we'll get to that in just a second. And then the only other material you'll need for this bracelet is if you want to add some charms to it when you're done. Um, so you might want a few charms. Um, you could do um, like a, a, a bead dangle. So I have lots of tutorials on how to do those. That's what this is here and actually I have a little butterfly that's also that and then I just have a little heart charm. Um, you don't need three, you don't need these, you could use one or whatever amount you would like um, at the end in whatever form you want. So if you want to have some pre-made charms that's fine. If you want to add some color with your own bead dangles that's fine too. And then the tools you'll need are wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and then you'll also need either a nylon or rawhide hammer um, or a hard plastic. These types of hammers um, will harden your wire without flattening it. So it will keep its nice round shape, but it will harden it so it keeps its shape. That's how um, we're going to get the bangle to keep its shape after we form it, um, even though we're using a soft wire. And you'll also need um, a steel bench block or an anvil or that sort of hard surface, um, that whatever you usually use, um, to use your hammer on. Okay, so let's get started. This is a pretty simple um, piece of jewelry. But um, once you know how to make one, you can make lots of them, and they're a lot of fun. Um, so we're going to start out with our wire, and wire usually comes kind of coiled up in a circle like this. So that is actually very helpful in this circumstance, because that's what we want it to do. So I don't have a super scientific way of figuring out how large you need this to be. But what I do is I just kind of put it around my wrist and then see how large I want it and then kind of pull it off and um, make sure it's large enough to slide off because it's adjustable you can make it larger and smaller. So now I'm just going to cut off the wire making a flush cut. So you can just double check. Um, so I'm pushing it on my wrist. I'm um, going to kind of make this a little bit smaller because I would want it to be a little smaller. But then you want to make sure you have enough wire that when you pull it off, um, you know, the wire is still around. Okay, so I think I have that. And if you find it's too big, you can just cut off an end and fix it. You know, cut off a little length and fix it later too. It's not the end of the world. Alright, and so you want to try to keep this in as much of a circle as you can. If you have a bracelet mandrel, it would come in handy here. Um, or you can just sort of pull around. It's almost like you're pushing up against the pressure. Um, 
like when you're making a ribbon, um, when you're curling ribbon in a package, and you kind of push against with your thumb. Um, it's the same idea. So that's how I'm making the circle. Okay, so now we want to grab our round nose pliers. Actually, before we do that, um, you want to make sure you have a flush cut on each end. So I know this one's flush cut because I just made it, and this one is not. So I'm going to go ahead and make a flush cut on this end, too. So the wire is nice and, and flat and straight across. Now I'm grabbing my round nose pliers, and we're going to make two loops, one on each end of this wire. One we're going to kind of go, it's going to go up, and, and one is going to go down. So, um, so this one will go down, this one will go up. So to make a loop, you want to hold your wire in your round nose pliers, and I'm making a very big loop because um, it has to fit around this wire, um, so I want to have plenty of room. So I'm going, using my round nose pliers, but I'm going in toward the handle pretty far because obviously it gets bigger as you get closer to your handle, so it will make a bigger loop. So hold that wire, um, the end of the wire, in your round nose pliers. It should be at the top of your round nose pliers, but not poking through. So you can run your finger over it. And then you just want to take your wrist and twist away from you as far as you can go. And then you just want to readjust the wire and then complete that loop. So we have that one loop. And then I'm going to do the other one. It's exactly the same thing. Don't worry because my loops are messed up right now. Um, we're going to fix that right now with our chain nose pliers. So just want to sort of bend it so it's flat and then bend up so it's perpendicular to the rest of the wire and make sure that end is touching and so you still have a complete loop and we're going to do the same thing again here on the side and up and then just sort of look to make sure you have your loops going the right way so that one is going up and one is going down and you can fix that now if you need to. Alright, so now we want to get the wire inside of the loops. So you want to open up this loop just like you would a jump ring. So you don't want to open away. You want to just open um, toward you. And so it's not a jump ring, so I'm not using two pliers like I normally would for a jump ring. I'm just going to hold on um, to one side here and just pull up toward me. So you're keeping that circular shape, but, but it's open. And then you just want to slide that wire in there. And I didn't open mine up quite enough, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is the only tricky part of this procedure. Okay. And then just go ahead and close the loop and reshape it as necessary. So you see that wire is now going through that loop, but I have the loop closed. And then you do the exact same thing on the other side. You can do them at the same time too. You can open them both, kind of get them situated and then close them. Okay. And I tend to get everything kind of misshapen while I'm doing that. So you just want to make sure you still have a circle, especially up here. And at this point, you want to try on your bangle again. Kind of close it to the size you'll want it to close to. And then pull it back off. And you may find that you need to uh, cut off a little from one side and then just make a new loop and just repeat the procedure if you need to. Alright, so doing that, as you probably noticed, I got my bracelet all out of shape, so I'm just fixing it up. 
And now we're going to go ahead and harden this wire so that it stays in a circle. Alright, and so how we're doing that is we're using a nylon or rawhide or hard plastic hammer. And so this will harden our metal, our wire, but it won't flatten it. If you use the chasing hammer, it would make it flat. You may want to make it flat. That's up to you. I prefer to you keep the round shape. So first of all, you want to just make sure you have this in the shape that you want. And fix any little issues you may have. Alright. And now we're just going to hammer. Um, now, it's a little awkward. You can't really hammer this part where the wire's doubled up. But you can hammer the rest of it, and that is helpful. So I'm just going to hold um, this part off of my block and hammer the rest of it. And so you don't really need to hammer the crap out of it or anything. You just want to gently go around. I like to kind of flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And then you can start to feel it getting harder. And you can keep doing this if you want until it gets to the hardness that you'd like. And then your bracelet will keep its shape. So that is the general idea for this uh, addressable bangle bracelet, but now you can add charms if you like. So I just have um, a few jump rings and I have a few different charms and I'm just going to go ahead and open up my jump rings and then you can attach them, attach the charms using jump rings into this part here that's doubled up and that way they don't float all around the bracelet but just in this part here which they'll still float around but it won't be the entire bracelet so as I was trying this on again I realized it is too big so I'm just cutting off up length of um, the wire so I'm just pulling that part off Oops. And I already have my charms on here, so I'm just going to try to do this with the charm still on here. And now I'm just going to remake my loop again. I want to make sure it's going the right way, and it is. And then you just do what we just I just showed you how to do. Just you have to do it again. <laughs> to make sure it fits right. And then just make sure you get that loop completely closed, um, especially when you have these charms on here. If you want them to stay in this one spot here in the middle, um, if the loop isn't closed all the way, then they'll kind of bop all around the whole bracelet. So. Alright, so that is the adjustable bangle bracelet, um, and that's the main idea. Um, you can also find the link below this video that will take you over to my blog. And over at my blog, I'll have step-by-step -step photo instructions, so if it's a little easier for you to see step-by-step -step photos, that's where you want to go. If you're over there, you can sign up for my newsletter. You, I send out an email every week, and whenever I have a new ECT TV episode, which is what you're watching right now, I send out the video link, plus you get a PDF ebook of the tutorial that is included in the episode. So you can download it and keep that tutorial. You can print it. It's easier that you know, to look at sometimes for people if they want to print it out and that sort of thing. So it comes to you PDF if you're a member of my mailing list. Um, and I send out emails every week. Also, you get my free 14-day e-course, Introduction to Jewelry Making. 
um, you get that automatically when you sign up. So even if you are not new to jewelry making, you might find a couple tips that you like anyway. Um, it's heavy on wire wrapping, so um, you'll learn about the tools you'll need and you'll get some free tutorials toward the end of that 14 days as well. So all that you will find on the link below this video if you're watching this on YouTube. And I really hope you enjoy this this tutorial and you customize it and make it however you want. You can use whatever metal you want. You can add charms or leave them plain and you really can decorate up your wrists. So have fun and I'll talk to you next week.